my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another reading for you guys. Before we get into this reading, I do want to let you guys know, for those of you guys that have been watching my previous videos, you already know how we get down. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, welcome my lovelies. Um, like I said, before we get into the reading, I do want to let you guys know if you guys are interested in the tarot deck that we're going to be using here today. Uh, this is the Lustrous Tarot, as you guys can see here. Um, this is a very beautiful deck. Uh, this is, we have partnered up with De Bright Company. Um, so if you guys are interested in any of the decks that I've been using, you guys are welcome to uh, place your order. Make sure to use Pinky Pink Star Doll as your promotion code, and that's going to give you 20% discount. You're going to be able to uh, choose from a variety of uh, decks. As you guys can see here, we're going to be using, like I said, the Lustrous Tarot. This is a beautiful tarot deck. Uh, you can see here the depictions very beautifully. Amazing deck, you guys. So if you guys are interested, definitely look at the description box below. It will have the uh, website link as well as the promo code so you guys can get your 20% discount. All right, my lovelies, let's get into this reading. This reading is going to be for those of you guys that are interested in knowing a little bit about your past life. This is going to be, this is going to be a bit of a past life regression. Uh, as you guys can see here, this is going to be a pick a card. So we're going to start off with set number one, set number two, and set number three. So go ahead and take your time. Go ahead and take a deep breath. Uh, ground yourself and see what set is calling to you. We have the cluster set number one. We have the wooden stick set number two, and we have the wand set number three. So go ahead and take your time, um, figure it out, <laughs> whatever you're being drawn to, whatever you're being pulled towards, that's going to be the message for yourself. Uh, we're going to go deep into this, um, as this is a very uh, difficult and heavy energy. So Take the messages that resonate, those that don't. Please do not force them. Uh, so let's get into it. Go ahead and take a couple of minutes. Okay, my lovelies, as you guys can see here, we have set number one, the cluster, set number two, the wooden stick, and set number three, the wand. So we're going to pull the wooden stick and set number two and set number three, uh, the wand. We're going to pull them to the side and let's get into the reading. All right, so here we go. For those of you guys that chose set number one, the cluster, let's get into it. So we have the Ten of Cups, we have the Page of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, the Ten of Wands, we have Vows, Native American, and Male and Female. Okay. All right, so that come through for set number one. What I'm seeing here for those of you guys that chose set number one, there are a lot of limitations that you're currently experiencing or feeling a bit frustrated about. For some of you guys, you're coming into this lifetime uh, being held or putting yourself in a situation of holding your vows to that of previous lifetimes. So what does this mean? Um, this usually indicates to me that in a previous lifetime, uh, you could have came from very rigid. Um, discipline was very important for you. Uh, this is kind of the energy of those that take on priesthood, uh, being a nun, um, keeping yourself or honoring some type of vow that prevents you from experiencing life to its full capacity. Um, as in this lifetime, what I'm seeing is there is a desire or hope to find happiness and self-fulfillment. 
page of coins here, though, it's indicating that it's been a very strenuous or very difficult um, experience in this lifetime to find the stability, to find the happiness within that you're searching for. It's almost like your soul is in the depths of your soul. There is desire and hope to find that happiness, that self-fulfillment, that balance. Um, but with the nine of wands and 10 of wands, you're often carrying other people's burdens or picking up on other people's responsibilities or um, even in a way kind of uh, excusing other people's lack of responsibility or lack of, you know, honoring their word or their what they're promising and you have a tendency of putting yourself in a situation where you often are the one that's left feeling like you have to pick up the pieces. So what they're telling you here with the vows card is again, like I said, in a previous lifetime, uh, you were very, you were very much in to honoring a certain type of vow, a vow that only comes through uh, a higher form of spirituality or it's almost like even a sacrifice uh, for the greater good or for humanity itself. So vows could indicate to me, like I said, priesthood, being a nun, uh, high priestess, um, someone that is seeking the knowledge and the wisdom uh, to, to pretty much train or teach others uh, that way of living or that uh, sharing that knowledge and within that, there are certain responsibilities, there are certain uh, vows in itself that you have to fulfill, that you have to uh, honor in order to be viewed or in order to be able to see or be seen as that of the energy or the embodiment of what you're standing for or what you represent or what you're doing uh, these vows for. So again, what I'm seeing is there is in this lifetime a desire to find your happiness. And it's almost like, even like when you try to go out of your way to make yourself happy or to put yourself first or to chase after your happiness and your desires and your hopes, there's almost like this, this contrast, right? There's this this energy of tug and pull type of energy where you want to go for the things that you love or that inspire you the most, but it doesn't come freely. It comes at a cost of feeling like you're selfish or like you're having to put your needs before others. And that's something that you're very much not accustomed to. So there's a feeling of guilt. There is a feeling of when do I get to the point of saying enough is enough and start doing or making decisions based off of what's best for me, not others? So it's almost like when you try to fulfill or when you try to go towards things that you want to manifest, things that you want to create or things that you're wanting to uh, experience, it's almost like an immediate feeling of regret, an immediate feeling of holding back or uh, trying to balance out, am I doing it for the right reasons or am I being selfish? Am I? And it's not that you are, it's just that it feels very uncommon for you to think about yourself, to put yourself first. Now, we also do have the Native American card here. This could represent that you come from a lineage of Native American descent. Uh, this is an energy of maybe being very spiritual or being pulled to spirituality. This could also indicate being very um, aware or even being very called towards anything that is of antiques or antiquity or anything that is in any shape, way, or form connected to Native American history. Um, and it's as no surprise because, again, this is what feels most comfortable for you. This is where your soul recognizes that and feels more at ease. You also have the male and female energy here. So what does this indicate? This indicates to me that whatever your sex 
uh, whatever your sex is in this lifetime, there is a feeling of not being comfortable in your own skin. Uh, maybe for some of you guys, even questioning your sexuality, uh, feeling like you are, again, restrained, feeling like sometimes you don't even feel comfortable being in your own skin. Uh, it feels very, it feels very odd. Um, and it's almost like this experience of questioning, why are you so different? And what Spirit is telling you here is the reason for it is because in your previous lifetimes, you were more of the opposite sex of the sex that you are now. So it feels very vulnerable. Um, often people that have experience, as an example, if you're a female, uh, when this card shows up, it usually indicates that you've had multiple lifetimes of being masculine energy. So with this masculine energy coming into the feminine, it is very unnatural for you. So you may find it very difficult when it comes to relationships, when it comes to partnerships, when it comes to feeling comfortable in your own skin, when it comes to being confident. A lot of the times when we have this type of energy, there is a imbalance. And with it, unfortunately, sometimes um, they can manifest, like I said, feeling very uncomfortable uh, in your own skin or feeling very out of touch or very disconnected. But this can also attribute to a lot of your health issues or health concerns because people that have a tendency of being like the uh, example I gave, if you are feminine energy, for example, and your previous lifetimes, you were more of masculine energy, then being a female in this energy or in this lifetime is very, uh, it doesn't feel comfortable to you. It's very unnatural. So with that feeling of unnaturalness, with that feeling of disconnect, uh, oftentimes they will manifest or this energy will manifest uh, with health issues or with feeling a bit confused or with feeling like you are not as confident or you're not as, you're not able to find the balance that your soul is seeking. And it's almost like you're trying to like live a life, but it feels like you're viewing your life from an outsider's perspective, very out of touch, very disconnected. And it's because of this, because this is not the sex that you're used to or that you're accustomed to. So one of the energies that, uh, or one of the lessons that you must learn in this lifetime is to release the feeling of having to be perfect or having to be whatever you think people expect from you. It is disconnecting from that and knowing that you came here to serve a purpose. There is a lessons that you must learn and you must master. And one of them is that of your counterpart. It is that of experiencing whatever your sex is in this lifetime to be able to experience it to its full potential. So if you are a woman, as an example, what they're telling you here is that you need to be more confident in yourself. You must believe and trust in yourself. Stop questioning yourself or comparing yourself to other females or males, whatever your sex is. It is about being confident and being comfortable in your own skin. It is about radiating the light within you unapologetically. It is about tuning in really to what motivates you, what inspires you, what creates the passion within you and be unapologetic about it. Chasing that which keeps your heart beating. It is about releasing yourself from burdens or responsibilities that are not of your own. In this lifetime, you must learn to let go and to feel comfortable in your own skin and finding your own happiness, whatever that is, and whatever that may mean, whatever inconvenience that may mean to those around you or your family members or your loved ones. It is about finding your voice, your truth, and releasing yourself from the fears of often questioning if you make certain decisions, does that mean you're breaking your vows to other people that you care and love for? And the answer to that is no, but you must find that within yourself. All right, my lovelies. All right, I hope that this gives you insight. Now let's go to set number two.
Okay, my lovelies, for those of you guys that show set number two with the wooden stick. As you guys can see here, we have the nine of cups, the eight of cups, the nine, or sorry, the page of swords and the king of wands. So one of the things that's coming, that's coming up off the bat is that you have a tendency of being extremely impulsive. Now, with the nine of cups and the eight of cups, I feel that there is a lot of imbalance in your life, in your current life. Uh, that indicates to me a lot of emotional immaturity. And the reason for this is because you're carrying a lot of past traumatic experiences from your previous lives. Now, it's almost like in this waking life, whenever things are going extremely well for you, or whenever things seem to be going good for you, in matters of love, uh, financial, business, career, Whatever the situation may be, you have a tendency of often looking towards uh, the bad. It's almost like when things go good for you, you question when is the next shoe going to drop. It's this fear on a subconscious level of things worsening or waiting for the worst to happen. Now, the reason for this is the Page of Swords indicates to me a lot of experiences with difficulties, with struggles with strife. A lot of it has to do with your past life experiences that uh, at some, in some way, it was almost like you never really got to the point of being able to experience happiness or complete fulfillment. Now with the medicine man or woman, this is indicative for some of you guys, your natural healers. You may be drawn to healing, Reiki, um, herbalism. This is the type of energy that your soul connects immediately because it recognizes something that is very familiar to you. For some of you guys, you have the gift of healing. For others of you, you have this gift, but it's suppressed. You may be drawn to healing or learning about healing or learning about energies or learning about uh, giving and receiving or balancing or manifesting. All of this is in connection with healing. And what they're telling you here is if you are being drawn to it, it is your spirit uh, recognizing that and understanding that that is a part and embedded in you. So my advice to you is, again, if you feel very drawn to this, it is something that you are very naturally gifted at. I would definitely encourage you guys to tap into that because you will be able to really blow your mind at how, how natural this may come to you or this may be to you because it is your soul recognizing the history, the lessons, the experience. Now with your next card here, we have the card of Asia. So in your previous life, there is a connection to Asia or the Asian culture. It is indicative that within that lifetime, there is a lot of uh, sacrificing. A lot of the lessons were to put others before you. And this left you feeling emptier, feeling like you weren't capable or able to experience self-fulfillment or self-happiness because if it wasn't as a whole to affect everyone around you, it wasn't something that you should be impulsed or pushed to do. So for some of you guys, you find yourself in this lifetime feeling a bit disconnected in that aspect. There is almost this feeling of your current situation could have been of, uh, you know, learning group harmony and the sacrificing of individuality. Uh, but the lessons of this lifetime needs to be balanced. This is, again, going back to uh, feeling like your current life's culture, uh, for instance, you may have been in the habit of suppressing your emotions and opinions in this lifetime in that lifetime, sorry. However, in this lifetime, it's essential that you be aware of your inner truth. So again, we go back to that of the experiencing or feeling like if it's your happiness that you're going for and it's going to affect other people in a positive way, then you should strive for that. 
And if it's not, you prevent yourself or push yourself away from that. And what Spirit is telling you here is we go back to the message of that of the set number one, which is self-actualization and self-awareness. Um, it is disconnecting, understanding that it's okay to disconnect from others uh, when, it is, when it's necessary. As an example, when people are toxic around you, this could be relatives, this could be brothers, sisters, this could be parents. And oftentimes we have this feeling like if I turn my back or I walk away from them, I'm, you know, dishonoring the family, dishonoring the ties or the connections. But in this lifetime, what they're pushing you to do is to do exactly that, to do what is necessary to make yourself happy and to find the balance within you. For some of you guys, you have a tendency of experiencing depression, um, anxiety, stress, panic attacks. And this all comes from the feeling of being closed off, a feeling like you cannot breathe, a feeling like uh, too much responsibilities or carrying the responsibility of others is something that plays a major role in your life. And it is the discernment of those toxic energies or karmic connections, I should say, that you need to release or let yourself go from so that you can fully come into self-actualization, which is the realization that you are whatever it is that you decide to be, that you become or you experience life as you should based on what you feel worthy of or what you feel you deserve. This is a lot about karmic energy is what I'm sensing. So for some of you guys in this lifetime, you may be experiencing a lot of connections or relationships that are almost like you feel like your heart is bleeding, like you're wanting to give up, like you're wanting to walk away, but it's very difficult for you to do. And the reason for this is because these are karmic connections. These are people that are connected to you from previous lives. And yes, in essence, to overcome those lessons, to let go of that karma, to be able to find your peace your balance the card of trees and this is indicative to those that may be on a subconscious level you find yourself uh, having a very close or special connection to trees in ancient times uh, particularly in celtic and eastern europe cultures trees were considered sacred the Druids looked to the oak trees for prophetic information. So there is a distinctive connection to that of past lives that came with wisdom. So what they're showing me here is past life experiences as healers. And these were healers of tribes. These were healers of descendants or family of importance, uh, where those type of ranking positions came with, yes, a lot of authority and power, but it also represented a multitude of responsibilities. So again, my advice, if you are being pulled towards medicine or healing, I would highly encourage you to do that, uh, to look to it, to figure it out to practice it because you will quickly come to the realization that you are very gifted and very powerful at it. Uh, and also when you're feeling depleted, when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling exhausted, go to an area or a space where there is trees, where you're connected with nature, where you're connected to the vibrancy of that, of trees, of, like I said, nature, uh, forest, of jungles. Um, and that's going to help you connect spiritually to the spirits that assisted you in your previous lifetimes. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to set number three. Okay, my lovelies, finally we are here with set number three, which is the wand. And as you guys can see, we have the Queen of Wands, the Page of Wands, the Knight of Swords, and the Four of Pentacles. This is very indicative to me that in this lifetime, uh, you have a tenacity about you. You may have very strong temper, 
or you could be extremely stubborn. This is no surprise, as it is indicative to me of a person that in previous past lives, you stood up for those that needed your assistance. You were very the knight in shining armor. Uh, perhaps in this lifetime, you find yourself in career fields or things that you're passionate about that have everything to do with standing up for people's rights, for doing what is right or standing up for the underdog type of energy. Uh, there is something of confidence that you carry within yourself and you are very quick um, when it comes to thinking on your feet. And this may potentially put you in a position in this lifetime to be a little, a little bit argumentative uh, to have a tendency of being very, uh, when people just catch you on a bad day, you're very quick to flare up. Uh, again, you could be a bit temperamental, uh, but this is to no surprise. We have Celtic, Greco-Roman, and knighthood. What does this represent? This represents that you have a very strong connection to the Celtics or to the Greeks or Roman, uh, the Roman Empire, uh, Knighthood is, again, a representation that in previous lifetimes you are carrying uh, history of that of knighthood, uh, standing up and doing justice or fighting justice. Uh, Celtic is a representation of being extremely drawn to everything that has to do with nature. For some of you guys, very connected to trees. For others of you, even believing in fairies or embracing fairies. There is a fundamental connection here with magic. So for some of you guys that chose set number three, yes, you are extremely sensitive, regardless of what may people may perceive you. I feel like you come off to the world as a conundrum. You are strong headed. You are very fiery, very quick tempered, but it's not in a it's not so much in a negative aspect. It has more to do because you're extremely passionate about what you believe in. Um, and this is also because you've accustomed yourself from previous lives to stand up for what was right, to fight for that which was unfair or unjustly. So like I said, I feel like people see you as a conundrum. They see a certain aspect to you. But in reality, the reason for you being very fiery, being very, uh, when people are criticizing you or judging you uh, from a very different perspective, you may take offense to it greatly. Why? Because you cannot fathom or understand how people can be so one-sided. Why? Because there is depth to you. There is the strong fiery sense to you, the justly, the fighting for what's right and being passionate, even in the way you express yourself, you could be very animated when you talk, you may move your hands often or be very, um, very illustrated or animated when you're talking. Um, but the reason for this is because it shows a sense of vulnerability, a sense of, uh, being extremely compassionate and being extremely sensitive, uh, sensitive to that of anything that has to do with your honor, anything that has to do with your character. Um, this is what really triggers you. So in this lifetime, what they're telling you is you need to learn to be more open because with the four of pentacles, I see you extremely closed off. You get upset or you get upset or it bothers you when people are very quick to judge or when they're very quick to try to figure you out. But at the same time, you're very closed off. So you can't really be upset that someone is only seeing a certain side to you because that's the only side you're allowing them to see. Now, if this is working out for you, great, amazing. But what they are telling you is that you have to connect with nature. This is what's going to keep you grounded. This is what's going to help you. Even when you're going through difficulties in life, whenever you feel like things are very difficult, if you need assistance, go to nature, speak out loud, speak to the trees, to the wind, speak to existence, what it is that you're trying to draw towards you, what you're trying to manifest, and it will come very quickly. Why? 
because there is that spiritual connection already. That connection is already there. It is tapping into that. And like I said, being a little bit more open, not so closed off. For some of you guys, you do have difficulty in love and romance. And the reason for this is, again, you take honor and loyalty uh, very seriously for some of you. Um, even to the point of catching someone in a lie, to you it's very, it's a major turnoff. And the reason for it is because you're from a time where loyalty was everything. Where loyalty is literally how you survived or how you would die. So loyalty and protecting and providing is something that is very crucial and important to you in this lifetime because it is very natural for you. So it's kind of like that saying um, when people get upset or when people that are extremely loyal get really hurt. It's not so much the hurt or the act in itself. It has to do more with their loyalty to you as a person. Um, so again, like I said, what you do need to release is understanding and knowing that in order for us to connect with people, in order for us to have that oneness, that connection, we also have to allow ourselves to give in, to bring our walls down, to not be so guarded, to allow people, to trust in allowing people to reveal to us their true character by their actions. So don't be very quick and hasty on judging people. Give them the opportunity and you will be very surprised, my lovelies, okay? All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did, definitely comment below, like, share, and comment, and we will see each other soon. Till then, bye.